Welcome to Friendship Christian Church, Friendship Ministries YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for joining us in the virtual classroom, uh, virtual Sunday school. This is Zephaniah lesson five, and we are in uh, chapter three. Chapter three is divided up into the bad city, the good God, the judgment, and the restoration. Before we go into our lesson, let us uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you for giving us your word. We just pray for guidance and understanding as we go through it, that by the Holy Spirit, you will bring us to the proper conclusions. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Zephaniah chapter 3. Uh, we begin in verse 1. And of course, verse 1 uh, through 4 uh, is the bad city. Let's take a look. Woe to the city of oppressors, rebellious and defiled. She obeys no one. She accepts no correction. She does not trust in the Lord. She does not draw near to her God. Her officials within her are roaring lions. Her rulers are evening wolves who leave nothing for the morning. Her prophets are unprincipled, they are treacherous people. Her priests profane the sanctuary and do violence to the law. Let's take a look at this first part here. Rebellious uh, and uh, defiled. That actually means polluted. So they're oppressors. They're rebellious, rebellious against God. And they're defiled. Uh, that means that they're polluted, in other words, spiritually filthy. Spiritually, it's worse than being spiritually dead. They were being spiritually dirty, filthy, uh, defiled, useless. Uh, they, uh, they took everything that was good and used it and turned it into something bad. They uh, were self-seeking. They wanted to profit from it as individuals. And they didn't care about what happened to the people that they were dealing with, with God's words. So it was uh, very, uh, the, the city became very immoral. And they went down this spiral because their leadership, both their uh, government leadership, and their religious leadership were all self-serving. So they took everything that was good in the law, they took everything that was good in the temple, and they used it for their own gain, and they perverted it all to make it be what they wanted it to be. So they, uh, and they oppressed people by doing that, uh, by teaching them false things and holding them uh, to accounts that they should not uh, even be held to. Uh, they did not obey God. They did not seek God. They didn't want God because they knew they were doing wrong. They wanted God out of the picture. They didn't want God in their government. And they used God in their temple for their own devices. So they did not obey the voice. And they were devourers. Uh, they devoured uh, whatever uh, orphans or, or widows had. They devoured whatever uh, the gullible had or the naive had. They took advantage of people's weaknesses. And that's what it is, the wolves who left nothing. They, they took total advantage of the weak. And they could not be uh, trusted, should not be trusted. And so that's the wicked state of the city. And the city is Jerusalem. And that's where the temple is. It's where the high priest is. That's where uh, everything was ruled from uh, as far as the Jewish law goes. And they totally turned it upside down to be what it was not. And they became to be immoral, internal decay. Things just spiraled out of control for wickedness. 
And so Zephaniah and some other prophets are saying, got to get right with God, got to get back with God. And of course they were killing uh, the prophets. They didn't want to hear it. It was all self-seeking. So then in light of that, now we have the good God. Look at verse 5. The Lord within her right, her, with the Lord within her is righteous. He does no wrong. Morning by morning he dispenses his justice, and every new day he does not fail. Yet the unrighteous know no shame. So they, God is right there. He's at the temple. He's walking the streets of Jerusalem. He's seeing what they're doing. He's calling them to righteousness through the prophets. The prophets are the eyes and ears. Uh, they're the, the mouthpiece of God. And they, they do not want any part of it. Uh, yet the unrighteous know no shame. Uh, they don't even feel remorse about anything they're doing. They don't have any shame. They don't uh, have a conscience. They could care less about what they're being told that they're doing is wrong. It doesn't matter to them. They don't care. They lost all caring. And uh, then in verse 6, it really gets bad. I have destroyed nations, God says. Their strongholds are demolished. I have left their streets deserted with no one passing. Through their cities are laid waste. They are deserted and empty. So he's reminding Jerusalem, look around. I've done this kind of destruction to unrighteous cities. Of Jerusalem, I thought, surely you will fear me and accept my correction. Then her place of refuge would not be destroyed, nor all my punishment come upon her. So the place of refuge, her sanctuary, uh, he's, he's going to destroy their high houses. He's going to destroy their high places of administration. He's going to destroy the temple. And we see the temple does get destroyed in Jerusalem. He's going to destroy their sanctuary, their safe place, their safe haven. It's not going to be anything left. He said, I've done this to other cities. I'm coming for you, Jerusalem. I'm going to do it to you. And he says, nor all my punishments come upon her. Uh, he's, he's going to appoint punishment uh, to the people of Jerusalem. Uh, he's done that. Uh, to Nineveh. He's done that to Babylon. He's brought them down low and he had an appointed time and appointed punishment he was going to give them. And now he's setting the clock. He's setting an appointed time for Jerusalem and the people to get punished. But they were still eager to act corruptly in all they did. They're given a warning. They're being told, you can see what I've done. I'm going to do it to you. I'm going to appoint a time. I'm going to appoint a method. It's going, I'm going to follow through with my threat. And they're not paying a bit of attention. Zephaniah is screaming this out in the streets. This is what the God says. He's going to destroy you. And they're laughing and they're mocking they're not believing. Even though they've seen God's power bring down uh, powerful nations, they think it's surely not us. We're the chosen people, after all. Well, God is going to come for them. He most certainly is going to come for them. So then we have a promised judgment. Promised judgment, beginning in verse 8. Therefore wait for me, declares the Lord, for the day I will stand up to testify. In other words, he's going to stand up to plunder. 
He is going to rise up and plunder Jerusalem just as he did the other cities. What does plunder mean? He's going to crumble their homes. He's going to crumble their high places. He's going to crumble the temple, which means everything to them. That's where they go when they want to make their sacrifices for forgiveness. And he's going to destroy it. They're not going to have a place to go. They're not going to be able to offer sacrifice for forgiveness. This, this word plunder is a horrible judgment. They're going to lose everything, including their way, just for forgiveness of God. Totally destroyed. So he's going to plunder it. I have decided to assemble the nations, to gather the kingdoms, and to pour out my wrath on them. All my fierce anger, the whole world will be consumed by the fire of my jealous anger. Anger. Can you imagine the power of God's anger. Can you imagine? He destroyed the world with water, with the great flood. Only eight people survived. Noah and his family, just the eight people survived. And now he's saying he's going to gather the nations and he's going to destroy them with fire. Well, he's done it before. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed. Fire and brimstone came down. Nothing left. And if Zephaniah is seeing way out in the future, we got the book of Revelation that tells us that people are going to stand there and the skin is just going to melt from their bones and the eyes from their eye sockets before they can even take another step. That's the kind of destruction God is bringing. Now he's warning Jerusalem over and over and over, and now it's going to come. But this warning coming from Zephaniah isn't just for Jerusalem in that day. It's for the whole world today. It's for the whole world today. And the book of Revelation is going to come true. The world needs to gather its nations and we have a gathering place, the United Nations. They need to come together. And they need to step before God. And they need to ask for forgiveness. And that is never going to happen. And we are going to have a judgment by fire. Now the judgment by fire did come on Jerusalem in these ancient days. But it's going to come on the world in the future as well. Zephaniah's prophecy. Is still going to be carried out. And then we have, then I will purify the lips of the people. Now we have a hint, a hint of a restoration. What's left is going to purify. All of them may call on the name of the Lord and say, serve him shoulder to shoulder. He's going to give them a second chance. And say, now that you've seen this destruction, now that everything's been burned up, now do I have your attention. Now will you gather and come shoulder to shoulder and declare me as God and stop behaving the way you're doing. Will that get your attention, he says. From beyond the rivers of Cush, the upper Nile region, my worshipers, my scattered people will bring me offerings. He's going to give them another chance to come and be able to ask for forgiveness, to be able to bring the offering. On that day, you, Jerusalem, will not be put to shame for all the wrongs you've done to me. If you will come back to me, I will forgive you and I'll forget. I'll forget this ever happened. Because I will remove from you your arrogant boasters. See, your troublemakers will be burned up. Never again will you be haughty on my holy hill. So I'm going to root them all out. And you're going to watch them burn. 
And then you're going to get a chance to say, okay, I'm getting right. But if you don't want no part of that, then you can burn with them. But I will leave then within you the meek and the humble. So the ones that want to serve God will remain. The remnant of Israel will trust in the name of the Lord. They will do no wrong. They've learned their lesson. They will tell no lies. They're going to they're going to reverse the state that Jerusalem is in and bring it back to where it's supposed to be. They're going to get rid of the filth. A deceitful tongue will not be found in their mouths. Instead of misleading people, taking advantage of people, they're going to be telling them the truth of the power of God. They will eat and lie down, and no one will make them afraid because they will trust in God. And then there's going to be the restoration. The restoration. Sing, daughter Zion. Shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach for you. I, at that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they suffered shame. At that time I will gather you. At that time I will bring you home. I will give you your honor, praise among the people of the earth when I restore your fortunes. Bring back your captives before your very eyes, says the Lord. So Jerusalem's going to be this great place again. And everything's going to be restored in its righteous way. And everybody is going to know God and is going to worship God and is going to give offerings to God and they're going to be in prayer and they're going to be singing hymns and they're going to be reciting God's word. And it's going to be almost like a paradise type place. And this is after God has had to burn it up and get rid of all the bad people and all the bad stuff. And we get a picture of this new world order in the book of Revelation. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth. And they'll be singing of hymns and reciting of scripture. And there will be no death and there'll be no pain. There'll be no tears. It'll be paradise. Paradise restored. But we got to get the judgment first. And the Jewish people have learned this over and over and over. And they continue to make the same mistakes. Well, we need to be able to learn from their mistakes. We need not to be doing this. We need the people of the United States. We need to let people know we keep going in the state we're in. This is what's going to happen to us. We don't need God's anger on us. And it happens to our own lives, too. Because what other fire is there left? If we die without being a, a child of God, without being a follower of Jesus, without having turned our lives over to him, if we die without all that, we're going to go into the lake of fire, just as the book of Revelation says. God's not done with the fire yet. 
So as an individual, don't get burned up with the masses when judgment comes. Don't end up in your personal lake of fire because you didn't accept Jesus. Learn from these scriptures. Learn from their mistakes. Be saved in Christ. Avoid the fire. That's what Zephaniah was telling them. It's, it, it's a simple message. But nobody wanted to, to heed it. Please heed it. Please heed that message. As a nation and as an individual. Well, I hope you've enjoyed Zephaniah. This finishes up that book. Uh, an amazing prophet. Amazing uh, message. And it still rings so true in 2020. Uh, let us close with the word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for guiding us by the Spirit. And we just pray that you keep us healthy and safe until we meet again. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for going through Zephaniah. And may you all go in peace.